Do your brakes drag or is there fluid leaking from your caliper? If so, it may be time to rebuild your brakes. I'll show you how in this video from the MC Garage. Hydraulic brake calipers are actually pretty simple. You've got the caliper body, you've got the piston, and then there are the piston seals. But if these seals are leaking or worn, or if this piston is corroded or rusty, then you're gonna wanna rebuild with fresh parts. In terms of supplies, you're gonna need a few things. New piston seals, which you can get from your dealer or order online. Replacement pistons if needed. Otherwise, some fine steel wool to clean up the old parts. Brake fluid, as listed on top of the master cylinder reservoir, used to lubricate the seals and refill the system some brake cleaner and an old toothbrush to scrub the caliper with, plenty of rags to deal with any leaks because this is a messy job, a dental pick as well as tools to remove the brake calipers, and finally bleeding equipment to bleed the system once everything is back together. To start things off, you're going to want to loosen a few bolts while the caliper is still securely attached to the fork. Go ahead and crack loose the brake line banjo bolt, the brake pad pin, the brake caliper bolts, and the caliper pinch bolts if you're working with a two-piece opposing piston caliper. That's so we can split the caliper body to remove the pistons later on. If you're working with a caliper that only has pistons on one side of the body, you should be able to extract them with the caliper intact. With everything cracked loose, go ahead and unscrew the banjo bolt and make sure you keep track of the two sealing washers. The hose is full of brake fluid, so have some rags handy to catch any drips. You can rig the brake hose up and out of the way with a bungee and it probably won't make too much of a mess, but I like to take a vacuum cap and plug the hose so there are no leaks whatsoever. You can buy a variety pack of these at an auto parts store for a couple bucks. Now unbolt the caliper from the fork and with the setup on the bench, remove the brake pad retaining hardware and the brake pads. Go ahead and invert the caliper and squeeze that old brake fluid out onto a dirty rag. And now it's time to get the pistons out. If you're working with a single piston setup like this one here, you can stuff a rag in the caliper and then use compressed air to fire the piston out. Go slowly and keep your fingers clear. For really corroded stuck parts, I've heard of mechanics using a grease gun to force the piston out. You can also just pump the brakes while the brake line is still attached, but that gets really messy and brake fluid is nasty stuff. For some multi-piston, two-piece calipers like this Brembo, it's easier to split the caliper body than it is to try to finagle the pistons out of the assembly in situ. Since we loosened the pinch bolts when the caliper was on the bike, now we just unscrew them and pull the thing apart, making sure to keep track of the O-ring that sits between the caliper halves. You need to be very careful when removing the pistons. Don't go grabbing them with pliers because even the tiniest scratch is going to end up tearing your new seals. One option is to use a folded up rag or a piece of old inner tube and a pair of pliers to very carefully pull the pistons out. Okay, pistons are out. You're gonna wanna inspect them for corrosion, pitting, or damage. You can knock grime and light rust off with fine steel wool, but if you have any doubts about the condition of the pistons, it's probably better to just replace them. Now we need to remove the old seals, but before you do, take a close look at how they're oriented. Run your finger along the seal to feel the lip. It's higher along the back edge than it is along the front and that profile ensures that fluid stays in, but also acts as a return mechanism for the pistons. To remove the seals, use a small pick or a screwdriver to gently pry out the primary and secondary seals, being very careful not to scratch the seal groove or the piston bore. With the caliper completely stripped, give the thing a thorough scrub down with brake cleaner and an old toothbrush. This is your opportunity to get rid of all that built up road grime and make those pinchers look new again. Your new seals may come pre-lubed or they may come dry. If they're dry, the only acceptable thing to lubricate them with is brake fluid. Wet the seals and gently work them into place, ensuring that that taller lip is on the inside, just like it was when you took the old ones out. Now for the pistons. Lube them with a touch of brake fluid, then push them into the bores and press them all the way home. Now put the caliper halves back together making sure that that O-ring is in place, and snug down the caliper pinch bolts. Slip the pads and retaining hardware back into place, slide the caliper over the disc, and reinstall the brake hose, making sure there's a sealing washer on either side of the banjo fitting. Okay, you are nearly done. You can go ahead and torque the banjo bolt and the caliper half pinch bolts 
to the specification listed in your owner's manual, but don't go tightening the caliper mounting bolts just yet. Before you do that, you wanna pinch the brake to make sure the caliper is centered on the disc, and before you can do that, you need to bleed the brakes. We've covered that procedure in detail in another video, so I'm not gonna rehash it here, but we will hit you with a link. With the brakes bled and the lever pulled to center the caliper on the disc, you can go ahead and torque those caliper mounting bolts. And with that, your brakes are rebuilt. As a side note, for those of you working on older slide pin calipers like this rear setup off a of CBR250, you'll also want to slide back the rubber boots to check the condition of the pins and sleeves. Hopefully there's some grease in there and the metal is clean, but if not, you'll want to disassemble, clean, and lube the pins using a high temperature grease. All right guys, that's it for this video from the MC Garage. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. As always, leave your questions and comments below. I do my best to respond to as many of them as possible. Until next time, ride safe.